Hello and welcome everybody to my course about understanding the electric grid, the requirements, structure and grid stability. Your benefit of the course is the basic understanding of the principle of the electrical grid, understanding the tasks in such an electrical grid and how they are assigned to different apparatus and I will also give you explanation of typical solutions as state of the art. This course is not meant as a deep and thorough course in electrical engineering, but I would like that you understand the principles of this. So to understand a resilient electricity system, there are two strains of explanation and focus. Focus number one is energy as a global quantity. Focus number two is power as a local quantity. And for the sake of completeness, I show you the full content of my course. But today we would like to concentrate on voltage, reactive power and power quality. Now let's get started. So power quality is defined at the transition between the public supply electricity network and the user's installations and the user's equipment. In more technical terms, this is my standard representation of an electric grid made up of high voltage, medium voltage and low voltage sections. And from this you can see that the power is coming from the generators through high voltage, medium voltage and low voltage to the users. And on its way it is deteriorated because at the source, at the generation side, the power quality is nearly perfect. So what are the origins of power quality reduction? Here you can see again a typical network made up of the levels high voltage, medium voltage, low voltage. And if a fault occurs in the high voltage network, the voltage at the fault point is zero. The voltage is short circuit, as we say. So this means this zero voltage is transferred straight back to the users so they do not experience voltage anymore. They have a voltage dip or voltage loss even. So as long as the grid is perfect, the voltage is moving slowly up and down within its statutory band. So this is okay. Now, if there is a fault on the high voltage level, this fault due to very good protection and very efficient quick protection will be tripped out within some milliseconds. So it is only a very short dip. If a fault occurs in medium voltage or low voltage, these disturbances may last longer. And if you're in a bad position that you're situated at the end of a faulty line, you will be cut off from the supply for a longer time, maybe even one hour. And now not forget about the influence of one group of the users upon the others. For example, in the terms of flicker. What is flicker? Flicker is the impression of a varying intensity of the light. Because if the one group, the disturbing group of consumers, takes the load out periodically, then the voltage at the same time will go down at the same time and we can see this in a variation of the intensity of the light and this is called flicker. Also, there are voltage swells and not to forget about transient overvoltages which stem from flashes of lightning. Now, what does good voltage mean? Good voltage is controlled by Ohm's law. We must understand this. This means that if you have a voltage and a resistance, for example, a line resistance, the current on its way from one side to the other loses energy and we have a voltage drop across this line. So let's make a typical example. We have a line. At the end of this line, there is one load. This one load takes a current and on its way to the load, the voltage is slightly reduced. So this means at the beginning of the line, we have 100% of the voltage and we lose a little bit of the voltage on its way to this one consumer. But as long as this is within the statutory limits, the voltage is regarded as okay. Now let's expand this network to a second user of the same quality. You see, in the first section, the middle center of this line, there is double the current and double the current means double the voltage loss. So it can be shown here that the voltage is much worse at the end of a line, which is typical for radiant networks. And as long as it is within its statutory limit, it is okay. Now let's change this 
instead of taking out power and energy, we will feed in power and energy. For example, with decentralized generation. So now the power flow is reversed. It does not go from left to right, but from right to left. And on this way, again, there is a voltage drop, but this time the voltage is at the infeed again higher than at the network center, which is given by the transformer. So here we can see that the voltage is rising. And again, as long as it is within its statutory limits, it is okay. Now again, with the same methodology as before, we add a second voltage source as before. And we can see now the voltage is added and we have at the end a higher voltage than we had before. So again, this is the general rule. At the end of a line of infeed, the voltage is the highest, but as long as it is within its statutory limits, it is okay. Last but not least, how about reactive power? For many people, this is an enigma. If you carefully watch this, you never can make it in your own workshop. So the understanding of the reactive power is in the structure of the loads. We have two types of loads. One is a load that takes out active power like heat. And the other types of load is like transformer, a reactive power consumer, which is controlled by its magnetic field. And the magnetic field has to do with induction law. Again, an induction motor is also a typical representative and you can see here very clearly these are the windings, which means this is a coil, an induction coil. In electrical terms, the consumer of active power is represented by a resistor and the consumer of reactive power is represented by a black box. This is called reactants. Now, again, with a simple network, consisting of voltage source, line impedance, and these two types of loads, which are divided into active loads and reactive loads, we would like to see what happens to the current and also what happens to the voltage along the line and what happens to the voltage at the consumer's point of connection. So if we have now these two types of loads, active power loads and reactive power loads in one system, we would like to see what happens to the voltage drop from the source to the point of connection. And first we concentrate on active power and active current. So in this case, this is dominated by Ohm's law. This means the current is always in phase. If the voltage goes up, the current goes up. If the voltage goes down, the current goes down. In contrast to this, reactive power and reactive current are slightly different. As I told you, these reactive currents are controlled by the induction law and this causes that the current is lagging the voltage. So when the voltage goes up, it takes a time till the current follows. We can see this here. And if we add them up together, then the sum of these is higher than the active and the reactive power. Now, the sum of the currents is the effective current that goes from the source to the load and this must be transported by the line. And these lines have current capacity limitation due to the fact that engineers want to avoid overheating. So the total current capacity is limited and this means the more reactive power we have and we transport, the less active power can be transported. So reactive power reduces the capacity of the network to provide and to transport active power. But it is not only on power that the reactive current has an effect, but also on the voltage. Of course, the total current causes a voltage drop from the source to the connection point. And here we have the limitation by the voltage band, the tolerance band, as I explained you before. And here again, this is a limitation. And to come to the conclusion about reactive power. Reactive power is like lubricating oil in a motor gearbox, well known to everybody of us. It is necessary to transform one physical quantity, but it is not converted into any other form of energy. I thank you very much. Please stay tuned to my lecture series. I hope to see you soon again. All the best and bye-bye.